Welcome to ETF Market Insights, a weekly show focusing on the evolving world of ETF investing. Each Friday, a new panel of thought leaders aims to provide investment education and insights with the goal of helping you become an informed investor. Make sure to visit youtube.com slash ETF Market Insights to watch previous episodes. And remember to hit subscribe so you receive a notification when we post new content and when we go live each Friday. Thank you for joining us today. Let's get started. This is ETF Market Insights. Welcome back. Happy Friday. I'm your host, Danielle Nezel with BMO ETFs. We have Tony Dong back on the show today. Tony is an ETF journalist. And I'd say, Tony, like an ETF expert at this point with all the writing you've been doing about ETFs. Great to have you back on the channel. Thanks for having me, Danielle. Happy to be here. Tony actually made it out to Toronto. He's in Vancouver and he's just said he's happy to be back in Vancouver, but he did make it out to Toronto to visit us in person for our ETF Investor Day event. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it, Tony? I enjoyed it. It was great to be at the TSX and uh, talk ETFs with a lot of interested retail investors. So one of the panels that Tony actually sat on, we got a lot of really great positive feedback on that panel. We called it ETF Spotlight. And we had five different industry experts um, share their thoughts on an ETF that they thought an investor should consider for their watch list in 2024. And Tony, the ETF that you spoke about, it got a lot of buzz afterward from the crowd. So I thought, let's talk about it on, on this channel today and talk about it with everyone who didn't make it out to the live event. And that is infrastructure. So Tony, we spoke a little bit about infrastructure and the ETF you spoke specifically to was ZGI. So that's our topic today. We're going to dive deep into it. But before we get started, a reminder, we're not providing you advice today. We're not providing you any investment recommendations. Tony and I are here to give you investment education to help empower you to make the decisions that are right for you and your investment objectives. Tony, investing in infrastructure, we don't hear about it that much. There's a lot of other themes and sectors buzzing like tech and things like that. But why should investors think about investing in infrastructure? The main reason you want to invest in infrastructure is that as a real asset, it's very much underrepresented in your average investment portfolio. So if you look at the composition of the S&P 500, you have the highest weightings in sectors like technology, financials, and so forth, but not a lot in companies that actually build, maintain, and operate the things we rely on everyday life. Things like bridges, roads, highways, sewage systems, electricity grids, natural gas pipelines, and so forth. But as an asset class, it's very non-cyclical, and a lot of these companies have very stable and predictable cash flows. So, for instance, when you think about the necessity of a pipeline, once all that infrastructure is up and running, there's not a lot of variable costs, right? They, they're not relying on energy prices as some of the end, uh, oil and gas producers are. As long as they have these long contracts in place, they're making money. So you see a lot of free cash flow. And compared to some of the more cyclical sectors like consumer staples, infrastructure is very much resilient. They are here regardless of the economic state, and they're absolutely crucial to a country's development. Great points there. Um, and then maybe I'll just add on, and you kind of spoke to it, that low correlation to other equities in your portfolio. You highlighted that at the beginning. So I had our absolutely. portfolio managers pull the correlations. Yeah, they pulled them this morning for me. So ZGI is about 0.6 correlation to both the S&P TSX, so the Canadian equity market, and the S&P 500. So a nice diversifier if you're holding broad market equities, uh, Canadian and, and U.S. equities. Tony, you like ZGI. It's, that's music to my ears because this is a BMO e ETF. Um, what is it about ZGI that you wanted to highlight with everyone in Toronto last week? The thing is, the infrastructure mm -hmm. ETF market in Canada is fairly small. There's not a lot of uh, competitors out there. ZGI stands out for me primarily due to its benchmark, which is the Dow Jones Brookfield Global Infrastructure North American Listed Index. Quite a mouthful. But the main thing I like is that it evaluates for inclusion companies based on their cash flows. 
So in order for a company to be included as EGI, over 70% of its cash flows must be derived from either developing, owning, leasing, or managing infrastructure assets. And this is a big differentiator between companies that evaluate it based on revenue or uh, other metrics. Cash flow is much harder to manipulate. And it is a concrete indication of how involved in infrastructure an ETF is. The other thing I like, as you mentioned, is the low correlation to equities and also fixed income. We saw that in 2022, that was the year for ZGI. As inflation stayed high and all these other risk assets went down, including bonds, ZGI actually returned positive that year. And the other reason I like it now is that valuation-wise, it's very attractive. It hasn't performed well in 2023 as most investors went into tech and crypto and other risk assets. And it's been the same in 2024. So I think that if you're a bit of a value-minded investor, perhaps a bit of a contrarian like I am, this is a chance to get what is a very attractive portfolio of well-capitalized companies with amazing cash flows and dividends for an attractive price. Right. So I was looking at returns uh, before jumping on this uh, today. And ZGI actually, it's been, it was listed in 2010. So if investors are interested in researching about it, it has a long track record. You can see how okay. it's done in various market cycles, which is really nice. I was going to say that, you know, the low diversification and the 10% return over uh, since 2020 can annualize, that's very competitive with the MSCI World Index, which is kind of like my go-to benchmark for global equity performance. So when you have similar performance, yet less than perfect diversification, that's a really good rationale for adding another asset to your portfolio. Absolutely. Great point. Let's dive deep into this portfolio. So ZGI, what kind of companies are we, are we looking at in that ETF? So despite its name, global, the index is very much North American focused. So in order to be included, it has to be listed on the U S or Canadian exchange. Geographically, we see that U.S. stocks dominate about 73% of its portfolio. Canadian stocks round up about 20%, and then there's a few from the U.K. and Mexico. Now, in terms of infrastructure industries, we see there's a big allocation to pipelines. Uh, the most notable one here is, of course, Enbridge and TC Energy. Uh, they transport each about a third of the natural gas and crude oil across the continental United States and Canada. Very important, they keep your lights on, they keep my lights on. And this is a good way to get back a bit of the fee you pay for them. But you also have electrical utilities as well. And a, a, a very interesting thing in ZGI that some of the other Canadian infrastructure ETFs don't have is an allocation to certain real estate investment trusts. The most notable one is American Tower Core. And for those of you unfamiliar with what they do, they manage all or most of the cell tower infrastructure in the US. And with the expansion to 5G, it's gonna be a big player in the future. Uh, another one is Crown Castle. And then you have some smaller allocations to gas utilities, but also water companies like American Water Works, right? A lot of people, you know, they, they kind of ignore these companies, but they're absolutely critical and they've been the backbone of the infrastructure sector for a while. You have a total of 50 holdings, uh, quarterly distributions from that. And it's just a really good one ticker way to get access to a what I consider the top U.S. infrastructure stocks without converting U.S. dollars or worrying about how much weight to assign to each. Because like I said, the Dow Jones Field Index does that for you. And in my opinion, when it comes to infrastructure, there is no better company out there for that than Brookfield. They are absolutely experts here. I totally agree, Tony. And we're talking, like you said, we're talking about cell phone towers and pipelines and roads. So these are... These are infrastructure assets that have long duration contracts and they aren't going anywhere. We all use these just as much as our iPhones and our computers and all the tech company names that that we tend to focus on a lot with investments. We actually use these infrastructure companies, even though they're less household name companies. Uh, I know okay. we do get questions from investors. Why only North American? It's We see global in the name. We're holding mostly North American names in this portfolio. The reasoning behind that um, is because it's a, it helps our liquidity of the portfolio. So all the North American names are trading um, on stock market hours that we're working with in Canada. So that helps keeps our spreads tight on this ETF. So just a little extra um, nugget of information for, for our, um, our investors and audience out there. Tony, how does this fit into a portfolio? How is something like ZGI and infrastructure, a building block in a broader uh, investment portfolio. 
So this is a great example of why I like the core satellite approach of investing. So for instance, for my core allocation, I may have say 70% to a uh, global equity ETF. I might have a little in bonds, but the remaining 20% there should be allocated to something that has a low correlation to both and behaves differently during the economic cycle. In this case, infrastructure that is rather steady, but also sensitive to inflation in a good way, as we saw in 2022. The other thing I want to note is that the sectors that uh, ZGI is heavy in, so real estate, utilities, energy, are coincidentally the ones that are underrepresented in the MSCI World Index, in the S&P 500, and a lot of these broad market indices. So if you want to shore up your exposure there in a very simple way, adding this ETF allows you to really size that exposure easy without worrying about having too much of one company, too much of another, and so forth. Perfect. We say an investing diversification is the only free lunch you get. And of course, adding a low correlated asset to a portfolio helps with that diversification. And like you said, low, low correlation to both equities and fixed income. Tony, those are some great points on infrastructure investing. Anything else you want to add on, on infrastructure or ZGI before we, we leave today? Absolutely. So, you know, I've had people ask me about the uh, global name too, this might be for North America. And the other thing I want to add is that that really minimizes geopolitical risk. We saw what happened in Europe with the Nord Stream gas pipeline when the war between Ukraine and Russia broke out. There's a lot of volatility and uncertainty there. And when you have an asset that's meant to be as durable as infrastructure, you don't want to take that risk on because you're not compensated for it. Having North America being isolated is actually a boon for this because we come from a developed economy with the rule of law, you know, strong borders and stuff. And these assets aren't as vulnerable to these inter-nation conflicts that tend to happen on the European continent and in the Middle Eastern locales. So I see that as a benefit. And when you add on the liquidity considerations of having, it, you know, them being listed on exchange here, I see that as a win-win. The only thing that I would like to see from this ETF and of course, that's a thing for the index providers, is the addition of railways. I think that's a uh, crucial part that's currently missing from here. You have some great U.S. railways like Union Pacific, CSX, Norfolk Southern, and of course, you have the CP and CNR. These are absolutely infrastructure, and if it was added to the ETF, it would take it from a uh, 9 out of 10 for me to a 10 out of 10. Easily. I love it. All the insights, so great. Tony, thanks so much for coming on and talking about ZGI sharing your thoughts and educating us on infrastructure. My pleasure. Happy to be back anytime. Well, join us next week. We have a show about yield due diligence. So this is a really heavy topic we've been seeing. We've been getting lots of questions from investors on high yielding ETFs. We are going to break it down for you and talk about the things you should look for when analyzing different high yield ETFs. You don't want to miss that. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Thank you for watching this week's episode of ETF Market Insights. To stream any previous episode of ETF Market Insights series, please visit youtube.com slash ETF Market Insights. Remember to hit subscribe and sign up for alerts so you know when we post new content. Also, we invite you to visit our accompanying website for ETF tools, education, and much more at ETFMarketInsights.com. Once again, thank you for watching. The session provided is for information purposes only. Any reference to a particular company or product is for illustrative purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell. Particular investments and or trading strategies should be evaluated relative to the individual's investment objectives and professional advice should be obtained with respect to any circumstance.